This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What is going on guys? Vincent here from the creative dojo.net. Hope you're all doing well out there and welcome to the After Effects Quick Tip video. Today's Quick Tip video, we're gonna be talking about all things gradients within After Effects. Now I know gradients are not the most interesting topic, but they are very, very popular right now, especially these really smooth flowing, nice abstract kind of gradients that you see on Apple wallpapers and just wallpapers in general, a lot of design stuff, a lot of glass morphism stuff, a lot of cool stuff that people are creating nowadays with a lot of really smooth gradients. Just some ways to kind of spice up your gradients and make it look just a little bit less boring than the four color gradient. Of course, this is still a gradient after all, so it's not gonna be super interesting, but I kind of want to throw you guys some ideas you can kind of play around with and kind of just explore your own ways to create some interesting gradients in After Effects here. So let's go ahead and go into a new composition and let's go ahead and create a new solid layer. We'll call this BG and then we'll hit OK. Now the easiest way to create a gradient is to go to the effects and presets and everyone knows this, but you can go ahead and generate a four color gradient right here under the generate section. We'll throw in a four color gradient and then what you can do is kind of change these colors to whatever color you want, whether you have a certain color scheme you want to go for or just a you know different palette that you want to go for. But typically I'm going to create something, some basic here that you can see a lot, maybe like a nice orange. We'll select kind of like a mid green tone or so. We'll go ahead and select a lighter magenta slash pink color. And then we'll kind of lighten up the blue just a little bit here. So we get some interesting like this. And then most people would probably just play around with the position, kind of spread this out. We'll move this here and we'll kind of move this up here. And just like that, you get kind of a, like a basic, somewhat smooth gradient. Um, but it looks kind of boring, it looks kind of bland and it looks kind of washed out. And so you can play around with the settings here and increase the blend, something like this, if this is what you're going for, or we can increase the kind of jitter here. So what I like to do is kind of go ahead and just apply an expression to the points, right? So we have the point controls, you can go ahead and move this around. Rather than keeping it static, you can go ahead and alt click or option click on the keyboard, select the stopwatch right here, and we'll do a basic wiggle, parentheses, let's just say one times a second by 500 pixels, if I don't have bigger comp is, semicolon, and so now this point is gonna be wiggling one time a second by 500 pixels more or less. So this point's always moving and it keeps it kind of interesting. And what we can do is we can go ahead and copy this expression into all the other points right here. So point two, we'll apply it. Um, go to point three, we'll apply it. And go, go to point four, alt click, and again, apply it. So that way all of our points are kind of just moving around. You kind of get this general flow of things. And so it's not just static, it's very, very smooth. It's very organic and it looks pretty mesmerizing. Another tip is going into your uh, bits per channel right here. And rather than going to eight bits, which is default, go ahead and select some, something like 16 or 32 bits. It's gonna make your colors pop a little bit more. It's gonna blend the colors a little bit better um, and kind of help with the banding as well. So that's what I would recommend here. So we have something like this. And so this is looking okay, but you know this is looking a little bit too smooth. If you're going for a very, very smooth, natural look, you could probably stop here um, but I really encourage you guys to go ahead and play around the distort tab right here. So if you go to distort, there's tons of effects that you can go and play with to really create a more abstract look. What's really popular nowadays is really creating these really abstract, subtle, soft shapes within the gradients. Um, very, very abstract. And you can kind of do that by applying some of these distortion effects. So the first one everyone's gonna go to is probably Turbulent Displace. You know, we can use this effect for pretty much anything here. So rather than getting these really smooth gradients right here, what we can do is we can go ahead and crank up the amount and that's gonna tear up our gradient a little bit. As you can see, if we crank it up all the way too high, you're gonna start breaking the whole image up. So once you see that, go ahead and kind of just turn it down a little bit. And there's different modes. So I would suggest playing around with stuff like Twist Smoother. That'll kind of give you a different look here or like bulge to give you a different look. Um, I kind of like to use this effect to kind of twist things. So you can go ahead and do bulge smoother, maybe turbulent smoother. Um, I like twist smoother. We'll crank it up until it starts breaking a little bit. We'll kind of turn it back. And then we'll kind of create harsher lines right here. And so this is the story at a pretty small size, that size 100. If we go ahead and increase the size, you're gonna get larger shapes right here, which is what we want, but then we can tone down the amount again so we don't break the image, right? So before, this is what we had, a very smooth gradient. Now with the turbulent displays, you're getting more harsh lines. We're starting to get that abstract shape. And if you want, you can go ahead and increase the complexity if you want. To really get some interesting shapes right here, or we can tone down the complexity and get a smoother shape. 
Um, but I kind of like to kind of push it to the limit right around like 1.8 or so. Tone down the amount until it doesn't break anymore. And what you can do is you can actually play around with the offset turbulence. This kind of just shift things around a little bit. And then the evolution as well to kind of change the warping effect of it. And again, you kind of want to just back it down when you start to see things kind of break like this. And so I think this is still too much detail, so we can actually increase the size a little bit. So it's a little bit more abstract and we'll tone down the amount just so we get something a little bit more large. So here we just have really abstract twisting of our colors, more bending of the colors. So it's not just like a radial gradient. You know, we're trying to avoid the radial gradient stuff, right? Too smooth. We want things to bend, something like this. And so when you start doing that, you kind of notice that the colors kind of get washed out. So what we can do is we can actually go in and go into the color correction and you can apply stuff like curves or levels or saturation. Now, when you add contrast to something, you naturally kind of create more uh, saturation to the color. So we kind of crank it down. You're really got, starting to see the colors pop more. So this is before, this is after. So we're kind of adding that punch back into the color like this. And then really, I mean, the sky's your limit. So you can go back into the terminal displays, duplicate it again. And now you're really starting to get harsher lines. So this is the before, this is after. So we're now we're getting abstract shapes. We're getting smooth colors. We're getting these filler colors in between. And for this one, you can, again, you can go ahead and play around with the amount and the size. Maybe for this one, we can go a little bit tighter, smaller size to create a little bit more shape. Now that we have the general shape now, maybe decrease the complexity and and so now you're starting to get some more interesting shapes. And you can go ahead and apply an expression to the offset turbulence and the evolution as well to create some very interesting warping shapes. Um, so now you're starting to see things look a little bit nicer compared to the typical four color gradient that we had before. And really it's more of a balancing act. So we can go ahead and apply a blur, right? Um, a Gaussian blur, or if you're fancy, you can use a camera lens blur. Um, so you can go in here and add a Gaussian blur here and we can kind of just smooth things out a little bit with the blur and then repeat the edge pixels. And so you get a little bit smoother of a result. And this is a nice way to kind of just smooth the results out a little bit using the Gaussian blur. And if you want even more fine control over your kind of gradient mesh, what we can do is we can actually apply an effect called mesh warp right here. And we'll apply this to the effect right here. And what this does is it applies kind of like a mesh grid which you can manipulate. By default, it's a little bit too many rows and columns. I'm gonna change it down to like four rows, four columns. And so that would create kind of less grids to deal with here. And this is a nice alternative to kind of manually creating shapes and blurriness. So one way people create abstract gradients like this is to actually draw like random shape layers and just draw like little abstract shapes all over with different colors and fills and strokes. And then they blur everything out to create kind of like this abstract type shape um, lines and which blur very nicely and whatever. Um, I think this is a great compromise because here you can kind of do the same thing with the mesh warp, but with the convenience of the four color gradient effects right here. So you can go ahead and click on the grid and actually manipulate the actual pixels that you see on the screen. And it'll kind of create like a distortion warp. So whenever things animate on, you're gonna see more of a weird, twisted, distorted look here. You can kind of bend things around and really create interesting looks that you can't necessarily achieve uh, very easily with the displacement. You could even use a displacement map. That would be pretty cool too if you have a specific um, look that you're going for. You can actually displace things that way. You know, you can take around the edges and everything. And by the way, guys, um, this would be a good time to kind of go down in the comment section and go ahead and leave a comment down below telling everyone kind of what method you prefer. Um, leave a comment down below really supports the channel. It really puts this video into the YouTube algorithm and really pushes this video out for more people. So if you want to support the Creative Dojo, go ahead and leave a comment down below, give this video a thumbs up, um, and that will kind of help out with the YouTube algorithm because they're pretty aggressive when it comes to kind of like educational channels. They don't really push us as hard um, just because of that kind of stuff. But yeah, so and you create a kind of a warping distortion map like this and you can play around with the, the, the quality and everything. And you can keyframe the mesh as well, so if you want to go in there and do that. Um, but basically now you have more of a warping mesh right here. And this is definitely a more interesting look than the traditional uh, four color gradient, which we started off with here. And so what you can do is you can go ahead and save this whole effect stack into an effects and preset. 
and go ahead and apply it to all your projects as kind of a starting point. So you can go ahead and create gradients a little bit faster without applying this whole effect stack over and over and over again. But this is a nice little way to create some interesting abstract um, gradients here. Now a second method that I do sometimes if I'm feeling very adventurous is to actually create this whole entire kind of mesh gradient using a fractal noise. Now you guys know I love the fractal noise. I use fractal noise for pretty much everything here. So we go into the fractal noise. You know, this seems like a, you know, a common approach to create some abstract, right? So you can go ahead and increase the size scale here, maybe increase the contrast. And you know, my first thought is to create abstract shapes, kind of using the fractal noise to kind of drive everything, right? So if we just play around with different parameters right here, maybe linear, play around with the look, maybe turbulent smooth or something like that. We'll crank it up and we'll use this to kind of drive the abstract look of our fractal in our gradient. So what we can do is we can go ahead and apply an expression to the evolution, maybe time asterisk 40 or so. So I kind of just animate over time. And then we can even keyframe the offset turbulence a little bit so we get some movement going on, something like that. And so now that we have this kind of basic black and white abstract noise thing here, how do we kind of colorize it and create really smooth gradients? So what we can do is we can actually apply an effect called Colorama. Now this is a very, very old effect. It hasn't been updated in a super long time. It's super archaic, but it's super powerful. And, and everyone wishes that there was an update to Colorama as do I. So submit your Adobe requests now. Um, but basically what it does is it remaps the color, the information of the input of your image and it remaps it to an output cycle. And here you can change the color. So there are some default ones like the Caribbean, which will remap everything to a blue color, deep ocean. A lot of these are very, very ugly. So I wouldn't really recommend them. Um, but what you can do is you can go and start with the RGB or the hue cycle. And this kind of gives you like a heat map predator look. This is what you're going for. Um, but you know, Go ahead and double click on this. You get this archaic color picture for your system. And I kind of like to lighten everything up just a little bit. But yeah, this effect is very, very powerful and you can do a lot with this effect. Um, not even I know much about this effect too much, but so once you have that, you can go ahead and increase the cycle reputation. That will give you some very interesting looks here. So you can create some pretty trippy effects. And again, it's starting to look a little bit washed out. So what we can do is we can go ahead and just kind of, first of all, I want to go ahead and blur the thing out because it's a little bit hard right now. So we'll apply a Gaussian blur under blur and sharpen. We'll blur that out a little bit. And you know, we don't want that many cycle repetitions. Maybe we just want one in this particular case, but it is, it is an option here. And we can go ahead and go to the fractal noise and things are a little bit too small here. So we can just scale this up pretty large, we'll decrease the complexity down just a little bit so we get less detail here, but as you can see, it kind of remaps everything. And if we can shift these colors around, it's going to recolorize and remap certain parts of the image based on the input here. So if there's too much red, we can kind of just crush it and move the red around. So we'll kind of remap differently here like that. And if we really just repeat edge pixels, blur this thing out already, you're starting to get some very interesting looks. And rather than playing around with the mesh warp, which you can, you can apply a term and displace to this, you can do whatever you want, but the real power in it is the fractal noise, right? The fractal noise drives everything. So if we don't like this look, we can just move around the offset turbulence, you know, you can move it to a different section, you can remap everything, you can scale down or scale up this whole thing to create different looks like that. And you can control the shape by controlling the contrast. So how much contrast do you want? And then how much brightness do you want? And so you can really create some interesting chromatic looks using this kind of effect right here. Now, obviously the colors are not ideal. It looks very, very chromatic like glass, um, but you kind of get the idea of how to create these shapes using the fractal noise and recolorizing it using colorama effect right here. And then kind of just blurring it out. And you can play around more that you can apply a terminal displace to this and really get a very interesting look. Again, we can do the same thing. We'll kind of crush it, maybe decrease the size a little bit, 
Yeah, so something like this is a very, very cool look. Um, definitely a different look compared to the original four color gradient that we had. And again, it's starting to look washed out. So again, we can apply curves. And I also want to apply another effect called hue and saturation. This will really give you some options to kind of help you brainstorm your gradient color. So first, I want to go ahead and go up to the curves and just kind of punch it a little bit, starting to fade out. So I want to kind of add some contrast to it. And so what you can do with hue and saturation, obviously you can desaturate things, add more saturation. But a really cool feature is the master hue, which allows you to kind of shift the hue of the whole thing. And so you can really explore different colors right here. So just very, very quickly, just by just adjusting this kind of control right here, you can actually toggle through the colors and really explore the different types of um, colors that are kind of available to you as a quick experimental way of just doing things right here. And so you do get some banning, so you have to be kind of careful with what you're doing with the hue if you're pushing it too hard. Again, you can always apply another Gaussian blur or different type of blur to everything. Kind of blur things out just a little bit, repeat edge pixels. And if you start to get some banding, you can also fix that by applying either a noise or a grain. That'll kind of just scatter things up a little bit and kind of break it up and make it a little bit less perfect. So maybe like 0.5 or so in size, maybe 0.6. That'll kind of break it up and give you some really nice smooth color. So you now these are just some two ways to really create some more interesting gradients that you may not have thought about. Um, rather than playing with the gradient ramp or the four color gradient, this is just another way to create some interesting, smooth type gradients for your work in After Effects. Play around with it, play around with the distortion effects. Before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it, guys. I know it's not the most interesting topic, but it is a way to kind of spice up your gradients in your design work in After Effects. Check it out. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.